All right, so at what minute are we at this point? Uh, six. Okay, so we see that some of the, these ones in, what cup is this? With. That's with carbon dioxide and they've floated up, so we know that photosynthesis is occurring. This one does not have it. Has any of them floated? One So you can, you can kind of conclude that the one that, when we introduce more carbon dioxide with the light source, you can measure that more photosynthesis is happening with the exposure to the main ingredients. All right, so pretty interesting. And uh, what did you say about um, did all of them drop, or do you have it? These have still yet to rise. Okay. All right. So one's rising. At what? How? What minute are we at right now? Uh, seven, seven minutes. Okay. And then we're going to keep doing this to another group with that lamp. Now, one of the other groups. One of the other groups is using this apparatus right here. Okay. So tell me what's going on. You got this cup. Mm-hmm. And what is this cup over here? Which one is, has the carbon dioxide in it? This one has carbon monoxide, and then this one doesn't. Okay. So we add, introduce, so this has the ingredients of carbon dioxide, water, and a light light source up here. And so which one is showing more photosynthesis occurring? This one. The one with carbon dioxide? Yeah. Okay. So uh, what minute are we? We are on basically 10. 10 minutes. Yeah. So we're recording for 15. At what point did you see the first ones rise? Um, at about, there was already some when we first put them in, but we saw more rise at about two minutes. About two minutes, okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So now let's talk about the videos that you just saw. If you're one of my students, you should definitely watch this video, in, partic in particular towards the end, when I'm going to go over some of the results that you need for your lab write-up. So one of the things that we did is we did a, we tried to measure the rate of photosynthesis. And we use the floating disk. Now, I'm not going to go over this PowerPoint again, but I'm just going to remind you, how did we measure photosynthesis? We first made those little disks sink. And we used a plunger. We made them sink. We applied some pressure, sucked the air out. Water fills in, and it's more dense. It sinks. And here it is sinking. Then we transferred that to a cup. And then we added a light source, so we add our, our components of cell respiration and photosynthesis are molecules interacting and using light to make something or breaking down something. That's the cell respiration breaks it down and gets energy. We're talking about photosynthesis here, so these little cups, as they do photosynthesis with their light source, they're going to start producing glucose but release oxygen. And that's how we're measuring that photosynthesis occurred. So before I show you those results, quick reminder, let's look at the leaf pitcher. The carbon dioxide is going in through the stomata. These cells are the mesophyll, palisade and spongy. Water in a plant that's not a disc is going to be coming up through the xylem. So you got water, carbon dioxide, you're going to release oxygen through the same stomata. And the food, the glucose, is going to be stored down here in the phloem, not stored, but go into the phloem, eventually go down to the stems and the roots. So let's just finish this up by looking at what the actual results were going to be. The results, um, and this is actually results from one of my classes today, so we had them graph um, their data. And one of the things you can see, so in the blue is the cup with carbon dioxide, your control is without. Those, um, if you're one of my students, you should pay close attention to this. If you're absent, you need to pause the video and copy this data down because you still have to turn in the write-up. Now, what's going to happen next is we're going to look at the trend. At So here's time. Here's the number of disks. There were 10 disks. So nothing happened here. By two minutes, the one of carbon dioxide was taking in that carbon dioxide with the light energy and of course the delivery system of the carbon dioxide was the water. We took sodium bicarbonate and made a solution out of it. So it's passing through that stomata and going into the palisades and the uh, cells and the um, in particular the mesophyll. So you see an increased rate and just to finish up, one of the things that we did in class, and I, they had a really good answer, you might notice this levels off. So photosynthesis has stopped but the oxygen concentration is still there and it stayed floating. If it if it, the oxygen wasn't there, this would have dropped off. So the question I asked was, what happens if this line drops? Pause for a second and think about that. The question is, do all living things do cell respiration? Yes. If this 
plant started doing cell respiration, it would start consuming the oxygen, and this would drop down. This is actually a question that a lot of AP biology students need to need to be able to answer. So one more thing, let's look at. One of my colleagues did some uh, did this lab, and she actually put it on a graph. So you actually see my student data from today, along with her student data from a pretty more intensive data set. So first, she actually had each one of these is a group, and then she took the average, she mained it out, and then that's where she got her graph. All right, and so here's your data, and you'll still see the carbon dioxide source caused uh, increase in the results, and without carbon dioxide, not as much. Uh, eventually, it might do this. There's some carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water. So, all right, last thing. Uh, this is a really great resource, so I'm going to just kind of pause here so you can see this is where I got this lab, and I'll put this description in the, in the, in the, down in the description as well. All right, brought to you by Curious Marineland, and thanks for watching.